Happy New Year, Scott. Well, Happy New Year, Dave. How are you? You know, I am not hungover much. <laughs> <laughs> I make no commitments after that. And you? <laughs> I'm, uh, I felt better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just leave it right there. But at least I'm not as bad as Mike. When I called him at 8 o'clock this morning to see if he was going to work on our Security Plus book, he's like, I, I, I'm not even human. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Somebody had sorry, I didn't, more than me. I'm sorry I didn't stop over at his place last night. That would have been fun. Yeah, right? We stood up till midnight, did the usual tradition. We filleted the hamsters and the hedgehogs. Excellent. Filleted prepped hamsters. The, prepped awesome. the leg of hippo so it could go in this morning. <laughs> Drank moe, though. We, 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 for the last few years, we finally started drinking something other than Corbell or Cooks or whatever. So. Oh, well, good. Because if you're only going to drink champagne one time a year, you might as yeah, well. Yeah, make it worthwhile. So, well, we make it twice. So, we finish half the champagne at midnight. And then whenever we get up in the morning, it's mimosas. Yay. Excellent. Which is so Perfect. much better than the mimosas we used to drink. We used beer and tang. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just threw up a little bit inside <laughs> just hearing you say that. Wow. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Welcome to, I don't know what to call it anymore, Pi Day Friday. Uh, this one's special, first of the year, the first AMA from Total Seminars on the year. We are very excited to be with you. And very glad that all nine of you, number is growing, are here to join us. So I'm Scott Jernigan, uh, Editor-in-Chief for Total Seminars and longtime contributor uh, and uh, editor and writer and teacher with Mike Myers. Uh, and my esteemed colleague here, of course, is... I am Dave Rush. Everybody here knows me, but since you may catch this on the archive, I'll do the deal. I'm the senior instructor sure. for Total Seminars. Hey, by the way, if you do catch this on the uh, archive, send us a message, and we're going to tell you how to do that in just a minute because you can't add it to the live feed. Uh, but I teach classes here at Total Seminars. I research, I moderate forums, and whatever other tasks Mike and Scott and the other upper echelons issue to me. And then we are very fortunate uh, once a week, every Friday, under normal circumstances, non-holidays, to join you here for these two hours at two o'clock central time where we can talk about all things Raspberry Pi, all things CompTIA, all things tech, whatever you got in your mind. Uh, as you may, we've done this for, I don't know, 25 weeks now, something like that. Yeah. I don't know what the date is, but it's well over 20 now. And uh, every week that we've done this, we always have a special feature. Today, we're going to install Pi Hole or Today, we're going to control an LED or make some kind of server that would be really good for practicing with Net Plus. Today is the first time, hopefully not the last, that I don't have a feature. Scott doesn't have a feature. We just want to talk to you. We want to hear what you've, what's on your mind and just kind of take a page out of Mike's book a little bit. Just want to spend the, the New Year's Day answering questions. So if you've got anything, that's the name of the game. Post up a question on the YouTube feed, I see lots of activity going on already. And if you don't want to, or you're watching on the archive, Scott's going to tell you some other ways that you can communicate with us, and I'll show you. That's right. You can contact us via email. I'm uh, Scott J at totalsem.com, and Dave is Dave R at totalsem.com. Dave also likes putting up his personal email, drushtx at yahoo.com. Uh, one or the other, both email addresses will get to him. If you're a gamer, look us up. We're both on Steam and uh, busily playing lots of games through the holidays. So I'm Scarheart, uh, no E, and Dave is Blood Rush TX. So look us up and friend us, and you know, let's let's do some gaming. I just bought. Uh, I long ago promised. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Good. You got your, you got your. Yeah, I just I'm always dragging a mouse around. So, if you like and and want to, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. You know, because that's what we do. Because it's YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. There's a bigger part of it. I want to get back to your game thing, but uh, 
had a lot of talk with uh, marketing people and Michael Smyer and some other folks. Uh, as you may know, if you're watching this thing, you're probably not seeing any commercials. We don't monetize this. Maybe sometime in the future when you're watching this in 2024, uh, that'll happen. But right now, we don't do this. And so when we ask you to like and subscribe, it's not because we're using this to make money. What happens is the more people who like this and the more people who subscribe to this, that moves it up in the YouTube search engine results. And that helps more people find this. And that's really the goal of this program. We're all locked down for Corona and whatever other reason you feel like staying at home. Uh, so that doesn't mean learning has to stop. Any pants. Right. Oh. So it doesn't mean learning has to stop. You're out on online. You're looking for how do I install a pie hole on a, a Raspberry Pi? So hopefully, because we've got some uh, good position in the search results, this will come up and they'll help find it. How do I install Windows Server 2016 in a virtual machine? Well, if you like and subscribe to Mike's uh, AMAs, then that's in there and people will find that. And that's what we're looking for here. I'm a teacher. Scott's a teacher as an, and an editor and a list of 35 other topics. <laughs> but uh, we're here to help folks out. So tell me about this game. What do you got going on? So uh, a couple of months ago, I think, uh, I, I, COVID time, man, I don't, don't pin me down. <laughs> uh, I was talking with Mike on one of the AMAs where I was like chatting in the stream and like, I'll, I'm going to give you a gift of doom eternal. And so over the Christmas holidays, just because, you know, why not uh, steam sale? I'm like, okay, time to, time to make good on my promise. So I, I bought a copy of doom eternal for Mike. And then the next day, because we're still writing at the third edition of our Security Plus book, and we were trying to finish the first rights by the end of the year, and we didn't quite make it. We're really close. Um, I'm still working right on on New Year's New Year's Eve, and I'm like, I'm like, are, you know, what are you what are you doing on Chapter Thirteen? He's like, what what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm working on Doom Eternal, <laughs> and I'm like, dang it! So I bought it too. <laughs> Very good. And apparently the multiplayer is wacky, like really wacky. So one one player is like this amazing super demon and all the other players are co-op trying to take him down. Oh, cool. So it's it's a very different kind of multiplayer. So I'm, I'm eager to actually try that. So yeah, I'll pick that up and, and we'll we'll get involved. You guys, too. Let's let's make a, a multiplayer game with all the folks we know out of. That'll be kind of sure. fun. Sounds great. So, uh, hey, uh, here's something that hasn't changed over the course of the year. I'm happy to say uh, we still got discounts or we're starting discounts again with the new year. Dave. So, yeah. Over the course of the year, it's, it's only today. <laughs> well, <laughs> one down 364 to go. Hey, hey, that's it. <laughs> and, oh, I, I keep, I'll get back to that. So anyways, we've got discounts as always. Usually they, they're all week long, but since this is the the end of the week, they're good for a couple more days and then we'll start up something hopefully on Monday. But uh, you've seen this one before probably. We got 50% off all A plus and net plus total testers and total tester slash Sims bundles and sec plus total tester. And I know Scott is working diligently on Sims. We get calls. Hey, how do you do this? And uh, not how do you do uh, something technical as far as Security Plus goes, but let's set up this camera, let's set up this audio and make sure everything is testing and working in his studio. So uh, code right now, it's good through this Sunday, January 3rd. I, that's the first time I said the word January this year. Uh, code is 010121. Okay, it's <laughs> trying to figure something out there. Nope. So January 1st, 21, today's date. And good for the next couple of days. Uh, Sounds what's, great, what's, Dave. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Scott. So if uh, – no, so that, that sounds great. It's a great, it's a great deal uh, on already good products and uh, already good prices. So Yeah, I was going to extol kind of the virtues of Total Tester, but everybody knows here we sold them hard enough, long enough. Yeah. But, you know, look, if, if you're – You've been playing around in, in A+, plus and you finished that last year. We had a lot of people who did that on mics, and you're ready to start thinking the Network Plus. You, you will do yourself a huge favor when you're done studying uh, by working on practice tests, 
and use that to help you gauge what you know and what you don't. And of course, we believe we have some of the best practice tests out there. Same goes for A+. Plus. You're just joining in. You're looking at this at us on the archive. And hey, I'd maybe like to consider a Total Sim uh, A+ plus course. By all means, you should. And again, use the practice test to help gauge what you know and what you can still brush up on. They're great, great practice tests. All right. So before we get before we get started on questions, yeah. I should say hello, everyone. Right, and we'll we'll go through the the romper room roll call here in a minute. Um, uh, tell me about the disco ball, there, buddy. <laughs> it looks realistic, doesn't it? It looks great. I love my disco ball. That's the sound <laughs> of cardboard. <laughs> oh my goodness, that looks great. And, and I almost want to move this over. I know I'm going to regret this, but yeah, there's a little embedded one here, down lower. This uh, side. Nice. This came from New Year's two years ago when the missus and I were walking through a mall and there was a, an upscale clothing store chain and they had this thing in their window and I saw one of the staff there taking it out of the window and walking it back to the store and I rushed on back and said, what's going to happen to that? <laughs> or the dumpster? No, it's not. I got you covered. So I walked with that thing through the mall for the next hour and a half. That's awesome. A dumpster then, diving, dumpster diving is good. All those, all those reindeer in my front yard. Those were all exactly so, you know, <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. Man, that looks so good this year. If you haven't seen it, Scott will post a, li a list. I'm sure to his smug, smug mug. Yeah, uh, and, and he just has the most astounding display. Uh, Andre, hi Andre, good to see you. Hi is Andre, on my same team as far as dumpster diving goes. So you know, this is all good. <laughs> What the heck just happened here? My, my show chat disappeared. There they are. Okay. I'm going to switch chat and I'm with you. We'll go and see. See who's up. Join the fray because that's all we're doing today. I'm not going to have to worry about managing time. We're just going to read and answer questions. If you've got uh, those questions that take longer answers or, you know, show me what it looks like on a pie. I got pie sitting here. We can connect to it. We can do stuff. So we don't have, just have to, to get verbal on questions though certainly like to and alice if you're here i'm already terrified of whatever you may ask <laughs> so here's the uh i'll post the since i can post again uh and post links in theory um that's my 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 spouse and i are just insane when it comes to christmas decor and dave is an enabler <laughs> he's an enabler so all the lights are his too so i fully support all of your insane efforts yeah we just have a lot of fun with it so who do we have today well yeah. i'm starting at about 158 and i see Tullowitz already punched in hello Tullowit, and greetings alan duggan happy new year to you my friend absolutely scott says happy new year too hi scott happy new year well hey so scott i don't want to go off topic here sure why not uh, I asked Tullowit on our Discord channel, which will fill everybody in on in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, Tullowit, as, as many of you may know, lives in Hawaii. And I asked him a question about King's Hawaiian buns, if that was a thing there. Uh, and he told me that, yes, it's a thing. But to my surprise, not to his, they aren't made in Hawaii. What? Oh, this week, oh, somebody filed suit against them. For not being Hawaiian, and Tullowit posted this, and uh, the missus and I were just talking about that conversation the other day. So, wow, Dave, or the Hawaiian buns are not <laughs> Hawaiian. Wow, that's just that's shocking and obscene. I tell you, obscene. We have a uh, a Thanksgiving uh, party at Total Seminars every year, and we break about halfway through the day. We work the the day before Thanksgiving. Till about lunch hour, then we get together for a Thanksgiving lunch and then cast like seeds upon the wind. And everybody always brings in uh, a wonderful something homemade and, and a, a showcase food. So everybody chipped in and Mike is one heck of a cook. So I'm always excited for what he's going to bring. Right. Last year, he brought two bags of Hawaiian King buns or King Hawaiian buns. I was so disappointed. Well, it was disappointing, except, except... Then Michael Smyre 
our resident super genius stole the show because he brought in homemade creme brulee. Right. Right. Where he like literally made little dishes with a blowtorch and everything. And you just like, that's wonderful. Them all individually for each person, except for me, because it would kill me. But, you know, <laughs> but yeah, so Michael, Michael stole the show and uh, made up for Mike's. Absolutely. Role, so. And the same thing for all of our other folks who bring in incredible dishes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, greetings to all the travelers watching in the past. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put up a shirt. I thought I'd be totally holiday festive. With your holiday uh, tie and everything. Yeah. Um, Excellent. As many of you know, I'm a an old former airline pilot, and they're very strict on what we wear and when we wear it. However, starting on December 1st, we are all granted, and almost all airlines do this, exalted permission to switch from the company tie to a holiday or Christmas tie. So this is one of mine from the collection. Wow, that's cool. I used to live for December just for that reason. Just to wear that special tie. Yep. Most excellent. All right. So we actually have a question starting right. off uh, at 159. Uh, and I should say, since I'm, I'm looking at the live stream as it's happening over here, um, as well as the questions as they're, they're going. Uh, so those of you who know, will know that sometimes you'll post things that are funny and Dave is saying something serious and I start laughing and it's not because I'm laughing at Dave, it's because I'm laughing at the live stream. Anyway. Hi, Alice. Ciao. Oh, Good. Alice is here. You uh, for Raymond is here. Um, so you got a question at one fifty nine. I see some solo it. Okay. Yep. So the question is, and this is a very good question, actually. Um, what what optimal size for various resolutions of monitors? Right, because there's plenty of monitors which are like. Oh my gosh, it's a 32 inch monitor. It's beautiful and it's only $189. And you're like, really? <laughs> you find out that it's 1080p and that's its maximum resolution. And when you get it, it looks all pixelated and nasty because that's too big of real estate for that low of a resolution. So the question is, and this is at 159, what's the optimal size for 1080p, 2K, and 4K monitors where things can be nice and big, but the pixels? aren't too big. I have opinions. Good. You start because I'm going to add something really wacky to this at the end. Okay. So <laughs> I would I would say 1080p, um, that's 1920 by 1080. Um, I, I would top that at 24 inch. Just flat out bigger than that. I have a 27 inch 1080p and you, you can tell. I mean, it's like one of those things. It's a gaming monitor. I'm like, okay. But yeah, it's it's different. Um, going to a going up from there, um, 2K you can easily do up to 32 inches. Um, 4K you can go well beyond that. Um, 36, 42. Um, I mean, I have a 4K television, but that's a that's a very different kind of thing uh, when you're dealing with computer monitors as opposed to televisions. So. I, I don't have a sense of what the top end for a 4K monitor would be. Um, I don't think I do either. I, I would be comfortable testing. I would expect it to be okay in the 5052 range. Hmm. But again, because of, of the television influence. I, I think I think Dudley needs to buy us a <laughs> computers so that we can actually address this question. Sounds like a plan. So the <laughs> wacky thing that I'm going to add to it Okay. is too small is okay. The value of too small, you want to do 4K on a 24-inch monitor, uh, it's, it's all going to be there. Uh, but the real value is the ability to zoom closely and not get that pixelation. Right. My new, my new Surface, um, my Surface Book, it's a 15-inch or 15.6-inch screen, and it's a 3K screen. Uh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's an unusual resolution. Yeah, but it's, I mean, I can zoom and it just looks fantastic. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And of course, I have it plugged in also to the 27 inch 1080p monitor. That's why I can really tell the difference. <laughs> the that makes sense. And the sizes. So, yeah. And U4 Raymond actually uh, posted that uh, his 50 inch 
4K monitor. It looks really good. So okay, good. That's I'm hoping it would. Good information. Apropos, a little bit. Uh, I was looking at uh, small display screens this week for pies, just to you know have a, a little bit of a display screen for if you're making some sort of dedicated utility like a music player or maybe a statistics screen on your pie hole or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's got a new monitor out now, a new display, I think is the, the appropriate term. It's, I don't know, four inches by six, maybe four by five, something like that. And there's a zillion of those out there. It's not impressive. But what is, is what they did with it. They hmm. cut the screen in half uh, vertically. So the top of the screen shows 10, uh, 4K, oh, sorry, uh, 1920. Really, really, really tiny. You got to have glasses and magnifiers. Right. Right. But what they do in the bottom half is it's a zoom half. So wherever you touch on top, you get this full big zoom on the bottom. Not nice. perfect for every circumstance, but a cool little thing. And I'm sure I'll get one. That's clever. Very clever. I just got a, um, a, a little Alexa display for that hooks into my ring doorbell. No. Oh. It's a it's a little like seven inch 1080p display. It's it's tiny, but it, the resolution is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's amazingly cool. Yeah, they make those for yes. cameras yeah. and things like that that are full 1080. Yes, you for Raymond Echo Show. That's what I got. Okay. Yeah, yeah. cool. Andre so, was watching Dynamo the Magician with my kids. I've never heard. I know Dynamo's a uh, a football team, soccer in American around here but dynamo the magician i got something to look up afterward now right right so uh yeah, in fact andre says we should try to look him up we will we will we, we will look him up for i'm going to pronounce it dinamo dinamo kind of the italian pronunciation <laughs> <laughs> i like it yeah dynamo is a football club uh here in houston part of the major league soccer league in uh the united states so there you go yeah. And their sister club is the Houston Dash. And they're very fun to watch too. So all good. Those of us who are football or soccer fanatics uh, really love the fact that we have two major league teams here in the city. And all of you Europeans are like, uh, only two. <laughs> <laughs> 211, Tullowood accuses me of being the dancing queen. I'm not. Mike is. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was going to get together with you this week, and it's not too late. Um, we have to get him some juicy pants. <laughs> oh, yes. So Mike, has, if you've been watching his Mike's Monday and Wednesday, Mike Myers, uh, our, the company president and great guy, um, Alpha Geek, is on from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time uh, doing his AMA. And a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about his yoga classes and then he was like, they started riffing on the theme and he's like, show us, we're like, show us your yoga pants. And he's like, oh yeah, I've got hot yoga pants and they have juicy on the. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I see that happening in the next two weeks, if not one. Absolutely. 214. Yep. Raymond, is it normal for Tracer not to show all the router hops between you and the remote VPN endpoint that you're connected to. Wow, so that's like a neat double question in there. Um, whether or not you're using a, a VPN, Tracert in the year 2021, and pretty much since the year 2001, doesn't show all of the hops. And it's not Tracert's fault. It's the routers have turned off their response function to it. However, they will continue to forward it. Hmm. So it's very, very common to see horrifically incomplete tracer results with or without a VPN. Cool. So at 2.14, Telewit threw Alice under the bus. Says <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she wants to know the density of the molecules and the timing crystals and if they can be returned, retuned for death lasers pew 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 oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't even know how to go down this road uh, you know <laughs> i'm gonna right? say 
I'll, I'll go pure science. No, you can't change the density of molecules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a party pooper answer. Yep, you can change the density of how close they are together, but not the molecule itself. Then okay, so something different. Alice jumped in and she at 215, she, she asked a, a, <laughs> a more legitimate question. I'm scared. What's the purpose of a partially meshed topology? Wow, that's a great question. And it's so real world. Yep. And to answer that, let's refresh ourselves what a mesh is and why they're such horrible things. They're actually very wonderful. A mesh says you have a network and every node on the network, every host, every device, whatever you want to call it, has a direct connection to every other device on the network. So let's envision that this is a single node network. And now I add a new node that's up here about my forehead. So I need a direct connection to it. There we go. There's a network with two nodes on it and they each have a complete dedicated connection to one another. They have full bandwidth. We can make presumptions about uh, full duplex and half duplex and uh, that, uh, no point in carrying it that far. Now let's add another node up here. So we need a direct connect from the first node to it. And we need a direct connect between those two nodes that we've added. So every station has a full bandwidth connection to every other node. And that keeps happening every time we add, we're gonna have to have a direct connection from here to here and from here to here and so forth. Yeah, it gets complicated. So it's really, really great because they all have this wonderful full bandwidth connection. They have no possibility of collisions. There is one problem within the truest definition of a hundred percent pure mesh. And that is you have to have as many connections on every node of the network as there are other nodes. So that suddenly becomes impractical after you get past a certain number, 16, 32, 48, whatever the case may be. At some point, the box that you build, the boxes that you build aren't going to have enough connections to do that. So, oh, now let's go back. One more really good thing about a mesh network. This isn't native to the fact that it's mesh. Mesh is a topology. That means shape of wiring. But if you chose to implement a higher level protocol, that says, I've got a fully meshed network. And if a link goes down, I could use those other links and the missing host and move data between them. So that's a really cool thing. Well, that's what we're gonna do then. We're gonna apply that technology to a network that says, I need some resiliency, I need some redundancy. So I'm gonna do meshed links in some places but not all of them. And I'm gonna use and take advantage of those meshed links so that we can build a resilient network. The internet in its earliest days, back when we used to have a, an X500 network, we used to call that thing, uh, was a, a circuit-based network that made partial net connections between things. Now, we do, now it's still a partial network. There's a, you know, 50,000, 500,000 routers all throughout the internet. And some of them have redundant connections. Some of them have loopable connections. Some of them sit there all by themselves. Uh, but the internet is a, a great big partially meshed topology, shape of wiring. Right. And I think, I think you, can, you can make a pretty clear argument that, that a lot of modern networks uh, implement this partial net mesh uh, topology. And in fact, when you, uh, get questions on CompTIA exams on mesh versus uh, ring or bus or whatever, they're talking partial mesh because nobody implements a full mesh technology with one giant exception. And that is wireless mesh networks. So for example, uh, in, in my house, I have three little hockey puck nodes that all connect to every other little hockey puck node in a fully meshed wireless network so that it's all the connections are there. So no matter where you are uh, with your mobile device, you get signal.
So in theory, that's always been possible, but in practicality, we've only seen that commercially successful at the home level in the last four or five years. Right. Yeah. This it's new. It was def definitely very new. Uh, up until last year, um, I had I had had my wireless network set up the old fashioned way, which I had a WAP and I connected it to another WAP and then I configured that WAP and I configured the, you know it's like with these new mesh networks, new ish mesh networks, it's like drop dead simple. Yeah, that's really awesome. I, I'm getting ready to switch this year uh, for yeah. Christmas. I basically got two sets of toys, uh, lots and lots of big micro SD cards and flash drives for pies and uh, some Wi-Fi cameras. Cool. And working out on my back porch is not good. I, I don't have good signal there. And pointing them out windows is terrible because you get reflections at night. So right. So that that sounds fun. So that's what that was your uh, that was your Christmas. Yeah, at least the stuff I'm willing to share. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Katie and I had a great Christmas this year. Uh, like the week before Christmas, um, the main sewer line in our backyard broke. <laughs> oh no! And flooded I didn't the backyard. Hear about that. And uh, so we uh, we called the plumber and was like, oh, honey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have good sewage again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not sexy. Mike, Mike, Mike totally redid his, his yep. system last right. year. He did it on air. <laughs> yeah. Right? During the AMAs. Nice. I love it. Hey, Edward Elbakian is here. Greetings, my friend. Nice to see you again. Our 50 degree looks great at 4K. Oh, yeah, that's what you mentioned. 50 inch. So. Small print, old eyes. And the Echo <laughs> Show, yeah. <laughs> right. Dynamo Open Air used to be a rock festival here in, I've never known the name of your community. So Eindhoven, I like it. Part of our Air Force base, someone decided to build houses there. That's what happens to airports, man. Um, developers love airports. The best thing in the world for a developer, speaking as an old private pilot, uh, whenever you, you find a nice home airport where you want to rent or base your plane or whatever, people start moving in nearby and then they complain about airport noise and then they get the airport closed. And then you have this great already leveled and well-developed area to put houses in and they get replaced by houses. So, wow. That's my thing. So uh, yeah, no more concerts, no more noisy aircraft. I moved to this house because it's 10 minutes from uh, the airport where I based my aircraft uh, and exactly what I'm describing has happened. They haven't torn it down yet, but my other, my previous house that I lived in, I was five minutes away from uh, an airport and we went to visit it in the last month, not the airport, a little restaurant that's next to it. Haven't been there in ages and it was a field. All the hangars were gone, all the buildings were gone. They just waiting to lay foundations for houses. Wow. Yes, uh, all the nodes have to look like Dave's fist. That's right. <laughs> Let me give you a closer look, Ray Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> so at 227, Slater Rubin has a question that seems like a perfect one for you. Uh oh. He says, uh, looking for a simple way of combining Samba with DLNA. Want to watch videos on smart TV from my media drive attached to a Pi. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Samba. I had an explosion at the end of Samba last week. I am going to take a little five minute break in here and do news of the week and show you what happened. But uh, check out the last show we did. It wasn't last week, it was two weeks ago. Yeah, because last week was Christmas. Right. 25th. So, 18th. Yeah, check out the uh, December 18th show, give or take a day. Uh, and I walk you, talk you through how to set up Samba. It's really easy, it's really fun. And I have been playing with that setup in the last two weeks a lot because I've got a lot more neat new things that I want to teach you about. It really has nothing to do with Samba, but uh, take it on faith. So if you don't already know how to set up uh, Samba on a Raspi server, check that episode out. Uh, and now we're going to add DLNA, DNLA to it. So what I would do, you could do this on the same machine. You could do this on any other machine in your facility if this is home or if this is work or whatever is set up uh, a Kodi server or a Plex server and set up Chromium with 
the D uh, DLNA support, the NLA. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike, Scott, I'm going to look something up if you'll kind of buzz in for just a moment here and I'm going to get quiet and look up the episode. Okay. While Dave is looking up the episode, um, I'm going to say that watching videos on the smart TV from your media drive attached to a Pi is an excellent use of a Raspberry Pi. And yes, we stream from, um, from little Pi, um, uh, and now I'm going blank because you know it's New Year's Day and that's the right. Up late. Um, what? Oh, what you're going to do next week, right? Is we're going to set up a, a file server thing, pie with multiple pies connected together. Oh, cluster. Yeah, I'm not going to do cluster until uh, probably close to the end of February next oh, okay, week. Okay. So doing yeah. a from our pie clusters that we can, uh, you know, have lots and lots of storage and uh, serve up good movies. So, okay. And then, so uh, on how to put this uh, version of Chromium that supports DNLA, DLNA, blah, 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 blah. get it right. Uh, go check out the two episodes on 828. Is that August 28th? Yeah. August 28th, and the one the following week, which is going to be 9.02. So i got three episodes for you to check out. Samba last uh, two weeks ago, and then back on August 28th and September 2nd. Wait a minute. September 2nd, that's a Mike AMA. That's not me. September 4th is me and Scott. And that was installing the media server part three. Uh, right. And you can do that then very easily. The that Chromium browser will do it. Cody will do it. Plex will do it. Now you mentioned that you've got uh, you've got a media drive attached to a Pi, so you want to turn that media drive into a Samba shares is what I'm presuming from this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Slater. Uh, and that's really easy to do. All you're going to do is plug it in and tell or install Samba on your Raspberry Pi and then say, here's the folder that I want to share. This will be a drive that I want to share. Uh, set up the share permissions, set up an account. It's very, very easy. It's one of those things that after you do it once, you could do the whole job in five minutes. But if you watch Dave do it, it's going to take you 35 minutes for that first time. Oh, well, at least you're entertaining. <laughs> so that's yeah, good. Speaking of which, I'm going to I'm going to break away here for just a second. I want to talk a, about a couple of things. Okay. All that right. Are newsworthy and interesting. And Lay it on it, is this more of the King Hawaiian? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, oh, I want to show you this. Uh, let me open up a command line here and share it with you. Okay. CMD. You don't have to do this in supervisor mode. And now we share because sharing is caring. <laughs> all right so there's your basic windows command prompt now windows has lots of utilities that people don't use every day and somebody on a forum recently asked me a question and they said i used these commands to get some results but i don't understand them and whatever and I had never used this command this way. It's called the net sh command. That's a, a command that uh, you should all know about and use. But here was a parameter that I wasn't aware of. So got this command net sh, net shell, wireless LAN show drivers. This is a, a great diagnostic tool <clears throat> for finding out what's going on with your Wi Fi configuration from the command line. So my uh, little uh, laptop that I'm running off of here today has a single uh, Wi-Fi card in it. It's Intel based. We can see it's an AC 7260 and dates on the drivers and all that good stuff. This is the most current driver, it's 2015. I'm not gonna read all this to you. This was the nature of my person's question. Uh, they said, when they got these results, they only saw what I'm showing you here as the first 
three. Yeah, and they uh, were concerned that they believe their computer was, their network interface card was supposed to support five gigahertz. And clearly we all know that 802.11b and 802.11g, that's 2.4 gigahertz and can operate in a lowered capacity on five gigahertz and in, at its full capacity in five gigahertz. But when you have N, 99% of the time, it also has A. So the fact that she didn't have A led me to believe that she's running 2.4 gigahertz N. But not my point of this story. Just what I wanted you to see is all the good information that you can find out about your Wi-Fi network uh, and your network interface cards and your drivers and their capacities with this command, netshell WLAN show drivers. Uh, and there's a similar command for showing LAN drivers, but you can't just change this for LAN. Uh, you gotta specify LAN, you gotta say netshell LAN, and then you have to specify a particular LAN interface. Neat stuff, interesting. Cool. And just generic. Yep. Let me close that. What else happened this week? Dave's troubleshooting okay. challenges of the week. This is quick. I've had this problem for a couple of months now. And I've, I just treated it as, as an inconvenience and did a solution to it. But I finally thought I'd better look into this. For reasons that I did not understand, all of a sudden, sometimes for just no reason whatsoever, both of my network interface cards, my wired one and my wired uh, wireless one would stop functioning. I'd get down in the lower right hand corner of my, I guess low, this is the lower right for you, uh, of my display, uh, a little globe signal, a symbol that says you have no internet connection. Right. And I could fix that by either going into a command prompt and doing the INET config. I'm brain farting here. Uh, I config. I, what's the word? IP slash config. release. What? It's inet config slash release, right? Yeah, I, I play Linux too much now. I've been IP config. IP config. I, I wanted to say inet config. Yeah, I, IF config. IP config slash release followed by IP config slash renew. And unfortunately, on my machine, that's a very time consuming process. It releases all 35 of my. NIC drivers because there's so many virtual ones and there's the uh, the VPN NIC driver and all that junk. And then the renewal takes even forever. -er. So what a pain. The, the quicker way, which is still not blinding with fast but better, is to right click, select troubleshooting and make it troubleshoot and find the problem and it resets the NIC. And one of the things that I've tried to find all week uh, is what exactly it does to reset the NIC so that I could just do that. But I've had no luck so far. If anybody comes up with anything, cool bananas. Well, I finally started to look into it and I came to realize that while for some reason this doesn't happen on any other computer in my household, there is a configuration issue somewhere in my laptop that I haven't found, but I found a workaround for it. Boy, I'm getting really fuzzy even on my own thing. I may kill my camera here in just a second, stand by. Okay. Uh, I changed the lease time on my DHCP server, which was defaulted to about 80,000 seconds. That's one day. Uh, and the maximum value that you could do is eight days, 604,000 seconds or something like that. Uh, and I did it more than a week ago. It seems to have solved the problem. So hmm. really weird. All right, I'm gonna change cameras here for just a second and recycle yeah, no this problem. one. No problem. So uh, while you're doing that. That worked. Uh, the suggestion okay. that Michael gave me earlier worked better than. Yeah, apparently we're better. doing uh doing Metallica puns today. So you know neither one of us have a Metallica shirt in the background, but you know, got to go somewhere. Got to go somewhere. So Metallica is the theme. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me show you what I screwed up the last time we were together on the very sure. final step. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so dumb. It was one of those. Oh, really? Man, really? It's, it's just the simplest thing. I got cocky. I moved off of my notes and, just, oh, yeah, it's just the last step. We can do that. Boom, boom. So take over, Scott, while I bring up the bring up putty. I will. I will. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, Telewit leveled the first joke out. You know, we've never done a Metallica Monday. I apologize, but might remain unforgiven. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm ready to share. Okay. All right. Go for it. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now we're Either going to that or it's my nose. Right. All right. You're looking at Putty. And this is where I left off last time. I launched Putty. And it was sitting here at the terminal, no, it was a session. And so what I said, we're, all we got to do now is open up the SSH and go down into auth and search for the private key. And so I did that and there was my private key. And I click it and then I said open. And when it does, it rings the warning bell. Well, that's because I missed the really stupid obvious step. Back up on top in session, I didn't put in the IP address of the host that we were trying to connect to. I don't even remember what it is. No, I can figure it out in 10 seconds. Yeah, I don't remember. I do, it's 129. Thank you. Go back to you. One, two, nine. And so you, uh, in the description for the, the pie episode, you actually wrote the correct answer, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. In the comments below. Yep. Screen sharing is stop. That's okay. So we've got a bunch of questions that have flowed in. Oh, I'm sorry. They That's all right. Go on for your news of the day. Yeah, let me get, so let me take you where it, it took me okay. to make sure that this actually does what I said it was going to do. Okay. So it's taking me to the login screen. I log in as Pi, I hope. Let me click on that. P-I. And bingo. This was the whole goal of our exercise last time. It didn't prompt me for a password. I have a private key. It has my public key. It sent me some random text that was encrypted by the private key. But I'm sorry, by the public, one more time. It was in the clear. He sent me an in the clear message. My private key encrypted it and sent it back. He used his public key to decrypt it and see if it matched what he sent in the clear in the beginning. And if it did, he said, there's only one person who could possibly do that. The guy with the private key that matches my public key. And so he's good to go. So watch that episode if you want to do this passwordless connection with SSH. And remember, put in the IP address of your host that you're trying to SSH to at the end, and it will work. Yeah, as opposed to if you forget that step and you're live <laughs> on the internet and you just go, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. But hey, that's, you know, it's it's funny. We, we talk about this kind of stuff after after the shows and stuff because Mike make, makes mistakes and uh, I, I don't, but uh, yeah, kidding. Fortunately, uh, you're the only I, one of us who is mistakeless. We're, we're human, right? And if we were in a live classroom, this kind of stuff happens. We just go into a, you know, boom, I'm gonna go into this demo. I'm gonna just riff off it and it suddenly blows up. And at that point you go, hey, let's have a 10 minute break. Yeah. And then, you know, we figure it out. And that's exactly what we do after each show. If something blows up, we do exactly what good teachers do. We figure it out <laughs> and then we use it as a teaching moment. So we, we can kind of do that with the live streams, with the commentary after the fact, a little harder to do it um, live, but you know. Yeah. Especially when we're cutting tight, uh, close on time. Right. Two more really quickies. Uh, there is a company out there, they make DACs, D-A-C's, Digital Audio Converters. So okay. they take the digital sound systems inside your computer, let's say Raspberry Pi, and they convert them into analog so that they can go out a traditional speaker system or amplifier or whatever. This particular company was named uh, IQ Audio. Okay. Well, IQ Audio has 
been possessed now by Raspberry Pi. Oh, and so okay. there are three big top selling products. Two of them are hats that are, one's a, a cheap DAC. The other one is a much more sophisticated one. And they're not expensive, like 25 bucks for the top end one. And then their third product is a DAC with a built-in amplifier. It's got a 35 watt per channel speaker amplifier. That's nice for a, a house, a living room, something like that when you're not looking to shake the walls, but uh, really good stuff. So if you just go look at the blog at raspberrypi.org, you'll see all the info on that. It's good stuff. Cool. Very cool. So and the last thing, news of the week. Okay. I love pie hole. I played with it years ago. I stopped playing with it. And then when we started doing the get in here, I've gotten really wrapped up in it. So I, I watch it daily and I watch the news about it daily. And a couple days before Christmas, yeah, uh, there was an update. They updated fairly frequently. This particular update updated. There are six components built into the thing. There's the engine and there's the web interface and there's the faster than light FTL feature that takes the results and rapidly, almost real time, converts them into something that we can see on the web server. All that stuff got updated and it's okay, nice, new, really cool. The big update was gravity. Gravity is what the pie hole people call their pair of default filter lists. So they have two filter lists. One is a list of malware sites and the other is a list of advertising sites. Well, they become dissatisfied with the folks who update and manage that malware site. So they killed that list. So right now, if you're playing RazPi and you do an update, by the way, the simplest way to update it is to connect with Putty or open up a terminal session, whatever, and just type in the command, Pi hole, one word, no spaces, no dashes, space minus up. Pi hole dash up. And uh, it will update everything for you quickly and, and magically. And you will suddenly move from 85,000 uh, entries. You don't see them all, but you see it on the main dashboard uh, to about 50,000. They're working with other people, of course, to get a replacement for that. But okay. You know, if you if if you need it for anti malware, it doesn't seem to have ever affected me. But uh, if you do, maybe hold off on the update until there's news that they've got an improvement. All yeah, right, that's all my news of the week. All right, that's good. So a lot of questions came in, um, several people actually, uh, starting at around two thirty three, okay. with Telewit asking a, a straight up. Uh, legitimate questions: Why aren't batteries getting better? <laughs> and, and that's that's a that's a really good question i've been i've been a pretty fanatical uh battery person for a long time unless you want to take this dave mm. take off so of course when we started with portable computers we were using different chemistry right we had nickel cadmium batteries and then we went to nickel metal hydride and eventually to lithium ion and then various uh other styles of lithium based batteries. And that seems to be the highest energy density that we have on the planet. So the problem with batteries is it's chemistry, right? So there's, there is literally a limit to how much you can, how much energy you can store and release. And it's, it's because it's based on the actual chemical interaction you can you can refine the battery. You can uh, refine its charging capabilities. You can uh, have it. You can refine the systems around the battery so that they use less electricity, right? Or they use it the, as efficiently as possible. And that's what when you look at a, a modern smartphone, for example, is a pretty tiny battery, and that battery will last for hours, if not days, right? It's not because the battery technology is any better than the three or four hour battery that's in your laptop, it's because of the efficiency of the electronics around it. So that, that chemical thing, and that's, that's the holy grail. It's like, what, what can we do to make that next step in storage technology? And there's been all kinds of crazy things that people have tried and continue to try. 
um, super capacity or super caps, for example, being the, the thing that was all the rage about 10 years ago. And people are like, well, yeah, they're great, but they discharge super fast, you know? And then, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I think you're on. Um, yeah. So you're right. There's, it, it all comes down to physics and chemistry. And if you, uh, if you go look at the, the big job sites and you look uh, up the word battery, you will see so many companies seeking chemists to advance the battery technology yeah. and, and advance the state of art. It's, it's, it's not a simple task. It's, it's kind of like, I think CPUs and, and chips and uh, there's a, a Moore's law kind of thing. They, they make these incremental changes that over time are, are pretty significant. It's not a seven year cycle, but uh, when they hit that next limit, they got to live on that for a long time before they can make a breakthrough and go to the next round. Right. Thank God Tullowood is asking Gloria Estefan, making Gloria Estefan references again for Samba. So Andre actually uh, followed up with a question on at 234 of why batteries go bad even faster if you drain them completely. You know, I'm not enough of a chemist to, to come up with that answer. I, I take those warnings seriously. I don't let my batteries discharge fully, fully. Um, yeah, and, and so... The, the way that the batteries are set up, some, some batteries actually need a full discharge. Certainly this is the case with like uh, NICAD and, and nickel metal hydride, where you wanted to drain them all the way down to nothing, then recharge them fully, because then they wouldn't uh, develop a battery memory of only being so full. Uh, that's not the case with lithium ion. Um, in that case, there's a certain number of life cycles of charging right, that they can handle. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I. There's yeah, some magic. And, and I, I, I know one of the problems that if, if you take some of these batteries that aren't designed for full discharge, when you start charging them, they're made of these sandwich layers right. of lithium and polymers. And uh, what's happening on some of the lithium things is a little crystal spike starts to grow up through and it pierces the ionic polymer or ionic layer and then makes direct contact with the polymer layer uh and that's a direct short as soon as you get enough power in there that starts heating up and blowing up burning so yeah this that one's beyond me uh andre sorry about that it's, yeah because that's the limitation that they've got yeah and and there's also i mean the the the, just the fact that batteries just degrade. So for example, I have a, uh, well, I don't, I bought it for me, but um, my wife, once she drove it, uh, was like, oh, this is my Nissan Leaf. So I have an electric car. Um, and over time, the range of the battery uh, that the battery provides has just diminished. You know, drops maybe a couple of miles per year sort of thing. And it's it's not because I'm overcharging or undercharging or anything else. It's simply the state of the art. So that's a thing. And Tullowit followed up um, with a, a good question. And, um, and it's like way down in the stream. Uh, but of course, I'm reading the live stream too. So, uh, and that is, is it bad to leave your phone plugged in once it's fully charged. I would say the phone companies know how to set up a, a I'm charged circuit in the phone and stop trying to charge when it's already charged. And so, no, maybe in early, early battery technologies, that was an issue, but certainly I, I, my, my Nissan Leaf it turns itself off once it's charged and you can leave it plugged in and it's not taking anything in current wise because the electronics are smart enough to know I'm done and full. Same thing with your smartphones. All right, it's exactly correct. They have full charge mode, they have trickle charge mode, maintenance mode, uh, and they're all smart enough to do that now. Right, exactly. I thought I had a graphic for a, a question from Alice, but I don't. So we'll MDF do the hand puppets. Idea. At 236 or, mm -hmm. yeah. To where I listed 235. Yeah. Difference between a main distribution and an intermediate distribution frame. 
Uh, have you had to write about those in the in New Sec Plus, or is that already assumed? Net Plus, yeah. Okay, so your main distribution frame lives in in one of two worlds. In the purest world, if we just go, that's uh, MDF and IDF, main distribution frame, intermediate distribution frame. A true, pure, honest to goodness MDF is a box that is connected to your internet service provider. So you got an ethernet connection, you got a coaxial connection, you got a fiber optic connection, whatever the case may be. And then from the output of that box, you go to a switch, typically in the same frame, in, those, in one of those big four bar or two bar frames. And from there, it goes to one or more other racks of gear. That's a pure MDF. The main distribution frame is defined by the fact that it's the box, it's the frame, it's the rack that has the connection to the internet service provider. From there, he's going to take that connection and translate it into what your facility needs. Is it Ethernet? Is it fiber optics? Is it whatever? Uh, and we're going to send out tendrils, connections, Ethernet connections to frames that service groups of users. Maybe that's a whole building full of people. Maybe that's a floor full of people. Maybe it's a department full of people. So every one of those folks gets a rack. That rack has enough switches and wires to go to all the individual hosts, the printers, the computers, the whatever you've got plugged in. And then somewhere in that switch, there is one wire that goes back to a switch on the main distribution frame. So those intermediates don't have a direct connection to your internet service provider. Excellent, good answer. Anything else to add? Uh, no, although I, I would like to point out that your, your mic is popping a little bit. Okay. So you might wanna- I'm used to, if you didn't notice, I'm playing the new game. I'm, I'm trying to lav mic, but I'm yeah. still speaking as loudly as I do to my microphone that's six feet six feet away six feet away <laughs> yeah anyway so try to speak i want to cut it down just a tad okay so um yeah so main main distribution frame and intermediate often you think of the main distribution frame as simply the main entry point for all of your stuff and all of the things connect like the network rooms uh, on each floor would be intermediate distribution frames and they would just kind of all connect together and then everybody eventually goes back to the main distribution frame. So. Andre, you did kill the, the battery on your phone. I remember talking about that. I too have killed batteries in phones to the point that, that they've become swollen. Uh, I have a phone that's going to die in five days. There is a feature that it doesn't have that if it doesn't have this, my carrier is going to turn it off. So I got five days to replace this phone. I have wanted to keep this phone running for decades. Seeing a reflection of myself, it's safe, okay. <laughs> uh, but because they're gonna turn it off, I have to replace it. But this guy's got just about four years of life on him. It's old Galaxy S6. And a, a year and a quarter ago, I changed the battery on here because uh, I could charge it in I don't know, about two minutes, and it would discharge in about 30 seconds. <laughs> it's, when I took it to the, the, the little dock in the box store that does those changes, I said, is this easy? And he said, no. And he whips out his heat gun and he starts melting the glue in there and peeling off the back. And then out comes this battery that looks like it's got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, battery death is a real thing, you know? And at some point, Dave, you have to let go. You have to let your phone go. I'm letting go. Even I'm my, still my, not going to replace it with Mike's fold. <laughs> my sainted mother called me up uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, just before Christmas. And she's like, I'd like to, I think I need a new phone. And I'm like, well, why do you think that? She said, well, because my battery life is, is really short. I'm like, oh, okay. What do you have, mother? She's an iPhone 6. <laughs> she wins hers is way over the line <laughs> phones don't last more than two years just out the window and get a new one because you know yeah. that's just the way the, the game works but yeah the doctor and doctor brother-in-law 
hand do hand me down phones to the family. So the wife and the son got new iPhone tens. I can't won't use an iPhone, but I have four new eights. So if anybody needs an iPhone eight, <laughs> I got some for you. So uh, Alice uh, has been posting several questions and people have been answering uh, with advice on uh, the temperature range that's good for a pie. Okay. Um, and of course, we know from, from Dr. Pie that he's like, I don't use a fan on my pies at all, right? And he's like, there, there's no, no reason to. But Alice says that one of her pies is running at 85 degrees Celsius. That's a so, little... yeah. So that's a busy pie, um, ah. and that one does need cooling. Yeah. They start throttling, slowing down their CPU speed between eighty and eighty-five. So a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that uh, Raspberry Pi just introduced their own fan. Uh, it's gotten mixed reviews. Cool, it's a fan. Also cool, it's five bucks. And let's go cool one more time. They designed it in such a way that it fits. I don't have one in front of me here. Uh, the official Pi 4 enclosure. That's great. Perfect. It's Yeah, it's downside is that thing was never designed, that case was never designed to have a fan. And so the way the airflow works in there is through tiny little uh, gaps uh, on one side, through a tiny little gap. And so it's not a, a lot of good airflow through there. Uh, people are drilling holes and coming up with all kinds of improvements to solve that problem. But here's the very cool part about it. Uh, support for this new fan has also been added into the core operating system and the management utilities, including uh, Raspi config, Raspi config. And that's where you set a trigger temperature for the, the fan to turn on. And most everybody, including the Pi Foundation, is recommending turn it on at 80 degrees. Cool. So and yeah, 80, 85, you're right. You're starting to throttle there. You can run them up to almost 100 uh, before they will shut down. They'll throttle uh, at 80 to 85, and they'll just stay at that throttled level, very low, less than a gigahertz, uh, until it gets to almost 100. And then at 100, it says, we're shutting down rather than destroy themselves. And a couple moments later, they cool enough, and they'll fire back up. But who wants right. that? And that's well, that. Good. that that behavior of, of CPUs um, uh, and lack of overheating uh, or how they respond to overheating uh, has been a thing for a decade. Yeah, every bit of. Where the, the all, of, all of the really great, we used to, back when I started uh, or somewhere in my journey, um, we toasted CPUs. I mean, we literally fried them overclocking and they just died. They died from heat death and poof, like the smoke let out. Um, but several, mm, a while ago, the CPU manufacturers came up with all of these different things that said, okay, if you're overheating, instead of dying, you just throttle down. And eventually you throttle down until you stop, right? But uh, that was always a fun thing to do in, in class because we're using my equipment and not their equipment, right? The students. And so we'd be like, well, what, do you, what happens when things overheat? And I'm like, well, just pull the fan off and find out, right? And people are like, well, I can't do that. And it's like, come on, this is cool. Yep. That's <laughs> you know? a really cool lab for you to do now. If you ever feel like getting into your computer and yep. it's modern, it's, it's normal, just disconnect the CPU cooler fan and power it up. And you'll get one or two things, one of two things will happen. It either simply won't power up or you'll get a little message during boot up that says, no fan detected, you want to continue or not, press right. F1 to continue. And if you say, no, I don't want to continue, it just turns off. If you press F1 to continue, it will last for a few seconds and then it will get so hot that it'll do thermal shutdown. Yeah. And so the, I mean, the, cool all that, the, time. the cool thing is that you don't actually hurt the CPU when that happens. Right. So if you accidentally forget to plug in the fan or whatever, it's just, oh. <laughs> Oops, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't hurt anything by it. So, but he's hoping for anesthesia when he goes to the dentist. Well, you know, loaded before you go, dude, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Disco balls. I'm passing 246. Yeah, I'm there. 
and they're they're starting to riff off the Metallica songs, which is good. Mm. <laughs> oh, Tullowith is going right into okay. a sanitarium. So, Alice, I showed this a, a couple of weeks ago. I think you weren't here. I've got an episode in cooling coming up in the next four weeks or so. Uh, and it's not about cooling. It's about overclocking, but overclocking requires a, uh, a cooling solution, of course. And so this is the fan that I got. There are only two fans that I uh, found or two cooling solutions I found that will allow you to 100% max clock your CPU and it will never drop down for a couple moments of cooling. I see lots of cooling solutions where max CPU speed, oh, get too hot, drops for a second, cools quickly, comes back up and you get kind of this square wave on, off, on, off. But this little CPU fan assembly, heat sink fan assembly, mounts on top of your Raspi CPU. There's a fan that goes on the front of it. There's uh, mounting rails and screws and everything in here. It's called the Pi to uh, Ice Tower. Ice Tower. And I don't remember what I paid for it, but you got to know how cheap I am. So don't imagine it was more than 25 bucks. And cool. I'm planning on doing that. Um, Plex gets a little toasty. Right. And so I'm planning when I get done with the demo in overclocking Plex, people are reporting as good as Plex is on a Pi 4, it's that much better when you overclock it. Excuse me. And so if I'm going to overclock it, it's going to get warmer. So I'm going for cooling. I like it. Ice tower. Even has a cool <laughs> That's just a cool name. I got to agree. Okay, I super scold. I'm heading back. We were in the 240s, right? Uh, yeah. Too really, Andre? <laughs> <laughs> I saw some good stuff at the end. I can't wait to get down there. Right? I know. Uh, oh, uh, Alice asks at 253, are jumbo frames really used? Yes but they are not used in places that you and I live. You're not gonna do a jumbo frame between your computer and your switch. You could, but you gotta set it up on the switch. You gotta set it up on your computer and it, it takes a little bit of magic. So you're gonna find those inside data warehouses and places like that where they're going to run either switch to switch connections with multiple connections with uh, bonded connections and jumbo frames because that avoids a lot of uh, acknowledgements and stuff like that. Uh, you may find them in long haul connections, long fiber optic connections, things like that, but they're not used in day-to-day uh, -day host to switch type configurations. Right. Serious question says Tullowit at 54 mm -hmm. as well as Matando. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> I was waiting for this serious question to come after it. Do they have a really big trunk and big ears? Man. Justin Kinsey, long time no see. Happy New Year. Glad you're here. Generation never. Miniaturized nuclear batteries. Yeah, I have some of those in the closet. I haven't played with them in about 40 years, but they're still good. I look forward. I, I don't think my lifetime, but I think my kids and my grandkids' lifetime, we may see something akin to nuclear batteries. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the technology. It's yeah. the cooling that matters. Yeah, right? and they got nuclear batteries in uh, lots of things that they send to space, satellites, rovers, yep. probes. Sean McLaughlin, greetings, my friend. Hi, guys. Happy New Year. Past A-plus on December 29th. Thanks to everybody at Total Seminars. Well, thank you. And we are so pleased. Congratulations. Absolutely. It's so awesome. now, uh, apparently, that uh, that automatically gets you a job. So please let us know what job that. <laughs> yeah, keep up the good work and get a job, in the words of Mike. And once you get that job, start working on that next cert, but don't work on it. Let, let your new employer pay for it. So NetPlus is down the road for you. I saw her. Hi, Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like that doesn't have cats, but 
I have one leaky old dog that walks <laughs> walks around. But at least she's still walking. So yeah. All good. Uh, okay, that's all right. You've answered that question or took us yeah. there. Fade to black. Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> uh yeah, and Andre, you don't if the battery's swollen, man, get it out of here. Yeah, he did. We went through that on I, Discord as a, an exercise as in a soap opera. It was terrifying. Yeah. And I, the problem is, of course, is in some places it's hard to find a, a, a place that will take the batteries. That's a fact. So, I mean, that, that is an issue. I mean, if you're, especially if you're in a smaller town. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting plosives with my pee popping, huh? Fine. Mm -hmm. Exclusive. Um, where are you at? Passing 302. <laughs> uh, so you haven't gotten up to where I, I abominated the uh, thread. So, you know. Okay. Well, I elbows talking to you here at, at 302. Something about a haircut, perhaps. What? Which I think you told us last time you were on that that was a, a Christmas plan for you. Yep. I got that. So my, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's it's weird, right? Because we're still in pretty serious lockdown, uh, and and my but at that at some point, man, it's like okay, I'm either going to take the shears to my own head, or we have to figure something out. And it turns out that my uh, wife's hairdresser won't take any new clients. Absolutely, only like you know one client at a time, and then cleaning out her studio after each client. Uh, but because I'm in the same pod with my family and you know we have been in shelter together she uh, agreed to cut my hair and so Yay. the fun part was uh i showed her my you know corporate do you know this is what i look like normally as opposed to peter frampton and, and she's like oh that's that's really that's really handsome i like that let's do something different <laughs> <laughs> so she goes let's just do it short on the side and we'll just leave it kind of moppy on top just to see <laughs> we can always cut it off i'm like okay yeah. why not i'm not Waiting. I'm not on camera on film uh, until February. So I'm like, like not really thinking through the fact that I will be on the internet and on camera <laughs> every week, but you know, oh, well. I think it looks great. Thank you. Thank you. I like Alice is uh, taking shots at elbow on 303. Right. Better late than never, but not in your <laughs> case. Elbow gets one Zing. welcome in and bam. Alice is throwing him under the bus. Way to go, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> right? Jason, Jason Helms is here at 304. Hey. There he is. Hi, Jason. Good. Glad to see you. Yeah, the uh, we're up to about, you know, we're almost at, at our normal load here, which is never cool. really that high. But, you know, once it, it sits on, on in the archive for a week or two, uh, these numbers go from 18 to 400. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a couple of people late. So my guess is Elbow and Justin were hanging together, building a pie. Baking right. a pie. Ooh, I like that. Very busy pie. Thank you, Alice. Yeah, so what do you got going on that's making that so hot, Alice? Although I think uh, uh, Justin, I think, uh, had a suggestion perhaps that there might be a difficulty in the or some flaw in the connection between the heat sink and the CPU and the Pi. I mean, that, that can certainly cause overheating if, if things are not connected properly or if too much uh, thermal paste is used or not enough. They, and they don't use them. They use these those little foamy things that are supposed to be heat conductive. But yeah. Got my so, doubts. The only pie that should be that hot is pizza. 85 where, degrees pizza. Yeah, I can eat that. That's where I that's where I broke the feed because of course I immediately went down the Canadian bacon and because it's the best pizza ever. <laughs> that and you have the ham you're cooking, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't had this discussion more than four times. Let's cover <laughs> what we like on pizza again. Because you know. <laughs> good. Hey, you know, that's that's an international thing that has to be solved. Wow. I super scrolled. Okay, good, good. We got lots of, of good questions here and still about 40 minutes to do them. Okay, cool. Right. What do you got next? I don't know. We are passing 309. 
Yes, that is big news, says Tullowit to Elbow. Got an old system here. Might give that a try. Fried CPU, catch up. <laughs> and I would say, and I have to just like, because I'm looking at the live stream, like, yeah. and only vanilla ice cream elbow. I mean, come <laughs> I geez. look forward to getting there. <laughs> okay, right. So Elbow's got that job with the three-month trial. So Cool. Keep your nose clean. Yes, ice tower, Alice. And, uh, yeah, I see your comment posted. from Justin. Yeah, it could be a, the price a thermal transfer issue. My guess is if she's running 85 degrees at the at this moment, she probably doesn't have anything on there. Or maybe those cheesy little three fin thin things. Yes, it's <laughs> it's very tough to use Metallica titles in anything outside of a reference to a Metallica title. Tullowitz says, I know Mike uses Windows Defender. I'm going to stop the question there and say, yes, sometimes. Depends on his computer and Depends a lot of other variables. How he's what riffing on the live stream. What yeah. do we use to seek and destroy Viri? Um, this is interesting. I've never told anybody here this. I do discuss this on forums when people ask this question. I don't know how many PCs and laptops I have. Uh, when you count the work ones, you count the ones here at the house. But on every single one of them, I have a different antivirus. It's kind of a, a many year long anti malware, long running test to see if one ever skips a beat. Huh. And okay. to date, I have never, not in the last seven years, had malware get through to any of these computers. So you're using Spybot Search and Destroy, you're using Malware Bytes, you're using Windows Defender, uh, you're using Avast. Uh -huh. Norton, Semantic. Yep, I got everything. No McAfee and no Kaspersky. Right. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have an old bad experience with both of those, so they're yeah. bombed. But so, so I don't I, have a preference. Defender yeah. is on some of them. What about you? I, I'm completely opposite, right? Okay. Windows Defender, perfectly fine. Uh, whatever is built into the Mac, perfectly fine. I never even think about it. But when I deal with a system that has potential malware my go-to is always malware bytes absolutely okay i'm with you on that so as as a proactive measure i don't care what you use as a reactive measure right you and i and michael and just about everybody we know except mike uh is a malware bytes <laughs> right right and even mike i think would probably use malware bytes yeah yeah push came to show push came to shove yeah 26 pounds for Ice Tower on SOS. Thank you, Andre. 26 pounds of what? Oh, those are euros. Sorry. No, they're real money. <laughs> now you're going to tell me that Bitcoin is real money. <laughs> you know, it's monopoly money. Uh-oh. Somebody foolishly took my advice. I'm afraid to read the rest of the sentence. Uh, at 313, Sean McLaughlin... Or McLaughlin. So, with advice from Dave, I made my PCs visible to each other on the LAN through the switch. Is there an easy way to make them invisible again for enhanced security? Um, I don't remember the conversation making them visible on the LAN through the switch. Well, I, I don't recall what you did to make them visible unless you selected the uh, the firewall option in Windows right. that says look visible and then yeah the, the the turnaround there's three settings in there that you can use to make them visible to other stations on the land or not visible to them so same utility right. usually the advanced firewall setting yeah and it's the, like turn off network discovery i mean that's yeah. the do not make my my system discoverable on the network right that's the exact yeah. correct terms so 20 pounds on pie hut well there you go again 20 pounds of what I'd like to bring in a 20 pound bag of flour and say, I want a nice tower. <laughs> Cause the joke never stops being funny. Not Dave. for me, man. Not for me. <laughs> oh, no. uh, okay. Toys uh, is yeah. Oh, I just super scrolled. Okay. Dang. I'm working in 314. Okay. Let me scroll back up. Yeah. Uh, maybe the problem, look, so Alice thinks that, that, yeah, she could be, along with the fact that she's pushing to the limit. Okay. 
And she's uh, running the Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Pi. <laughs> According to Elbow, which, you know, he's a reputable source. Got it. I'm waiting for, Dallas. I'm waiting to, after 314 for Tullo, Tullo it to say, uh, do an Eagles reference to pushing it to the limit. I know it's taken it to the limit, but Tullo it goes there. Deep discharging a battery seems to qualify for creeping death. Eh, depends on the bat. Oh, got it. Right. No, it's Metallica. Yes. They're, I'm they're, so they're slow on the uptake it. sometimes. Yeah, they're working it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody's done Enter the Sandman yet. I mean, come on. Come on, people. Yeesh. Okay, there we go. I super scrolled, but I'm back. Clippers. How's the PC assembling going? Okay, yes. Yeah, so okay. The great assembly that we track here and on AMA yeah, on Discord, and yeah. on Discord. Mine's done. Yeah, yours was working a long time ago. <laughs> the battery shooting in my backyard. In your backyard? What do you got behind your backyard if That's we're going to shoot? Uh, <laughs> causing blisters in the roof of your mouth. You're right, fellow it. <laughs> I like a good hot pizza. Cheese pizza, man. That's not a pizza. <laughs> okay, that's a grilled <laughs> cheese sandwich. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, just cheese. Ugh. Andre, I know feeling okay. Cheese, pizza, and vanilla. <laughs> I see where you went with vanilla. Yeah, I was, I was teasing about vanilla ice cream. So there you go. Can you explain BGP? Oof. Yeah, sure. How much time we got? Go 34 minutes. <laughs> Be my guess. Yeah, I'll give you a speed version. Um, did we do BGP? Did Mike do a BGP? I'm going to check that when we get done with this. Okay, BGP, the short version. The short, short version. Do you? Do you? You're married. Kiss her. Sorry, I went space walls for a second there. All right. Border Gateway Patrol says we have a bunch of routers. Protocol, not patrol. Sorry. <laughs> Just a little more. Cider. Yeah, cider, you say. <laughs> Border Patrol. That's where that came from. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So Border Gateway Protocol says, we have a batch of routers that collectively have to track a massive, unfathomable number of routes. When you get into the internet, we're not talking about 127 class A addresses and 32,000 class B addresses and 16 million class C addresses. Those are all broken up. Every one of those is broken up into almost the maximum number of possible subnets for that thing. So when you start looking at class A addresses and you break that puppy up into, well, there's 16 million easily, a little shy of 16 million. But so we have these just enormous numbers. And that's one of the things that makes these uh, routers so very expensive. They have so much memory in them. They have so much power uh, in their processors and they've got to communicate these routes to one another. So there is no way to expand that through the entire internet. So they say, tell you what, we're gonna make a group of routers here and they are collectively gonna take care of a small chunk of this gigundous number of routes. And so the organizational structure is really what makes BGP magical. The whole system says this group is collectively called an autonomous system, an AS. And within that group, one of the routers is gonna be designated as the boss. And he's going to get a mental picture by communicating with every other router of every route. So it's an interesting way they do it. You can manually make one a boss and that's the way it's done today. In the early days, all the routers got together and they used a, a mechanism to determine who was manufactured most recently. And it was typically done by a MAC address that's in there. Uh, and it's the one with the newest, latest, greatest MAC address. So figuring on the basis that, okay, the newest, latest, greatest guy is probably better, stronger, smarter, and faster than the rest of us. 
And so once he's got that mental picture of the routes, he becomes kind of a master reference. He doles out chunks of information that other routers in the autonomous system require. And then this is where it starts to get really kind of cool. <coughs> Excuse me. The autonomous system has an identifier that's a four digit number, not a four digit number. It's a uh, same kind of number that an IP address has. It's number dot number dot number dot number. And okay, so the thing is all working with this, within an autonomous system, great. The problem is, or the, the value perhaps is We've got these autonomous systems all over the world taking care of different chunks of big pieces of routes. So they have to be able to communicate with one another. And so we're going to take that boss guy or one of the edge routers and connect that to another boss guy in another autonomous system or to another edge router in there and link those two guys together and their ability to communicate routes on an as needed basis, on a really fast basis, and be able to come up with best routes <coughs> is what BGP is all about. So we get these border routers communicating the pieces that other autonomous system needs. That's the short, short, short version. Um, when I used to teach this as a class 20 years ago, it's a semester. So there you go, Alice. Go to your CCNA class. I knew you're in one. This short version, just for you. Yeah, I know. When Dave says short, it's usually a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I use Linux as Alex. Alice. I don't deal with malware. <laughs> right. Uh, Having antivirus is living where the wild things are. You know, they got well, antiviral stuff, anti-malware for uh, Android phones. I don't have any on mine, I, but that doesn't mean I'm not infected. It means I don't know. <laughs> so you're uh, living where the wild things are. Yeah. There you go. Family PC should be cheaper and easier than your gaming one. Yes. Uh, super scrolled. <laughs> okay. I'm at 324. Oops. And super scrolled. <laughs> wow. I think we're in sync. Yeah, so that, that's a thing, people. If those of you who are new here um, know that YouTube scrolling thing just suddenly goes, oh, no, we really want you to go all the way to the latest comment. And it just does it. Yeah, so. I think it does that when, when, when so many have piled up. Yeah. It's saying, yeah, I don't want you to have missed anything. Yep. Oh, passing 325, multitasking to a small degree. Okay, at 325, Gianmarco Pagliucci, uh, Pagliuca. Man, that could be like so many different countries. I hope, I'm sure I butchered that, uh, Gianmarco. I'll bet I got that part right. So correct me, and, or I apologize if I blew it. But let, your question's there. Do you think that Lucio Software Bundle will become one of the best ones in 2020? I'm going to operate on the theory that having never heard of the Lucio software bundle, best, you know, how do you define best? Popularity, um, doing what it does as it does. Scott's looking it up right now. We'll take a look at it. But I am in no way familiar with the Lucio software bundle. We'll see what Scott finds and dig into it. Huh. You know what? We did Eagles one day because we did the uh, Unforgiven pun. Yeah, What'd you find? Got, I've got nothing. Oh, wow. All right. You took some questions. I'm going to try something. That's okay. weird. We, we can always find something. Right. So, yes, uh, our, our lovely European friends are definitely going to be going to the uh, enter the Sandman mode here uh, after this live stream because it's much later at night. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it's only in the middle, after, middle of the afternoon. In fact, we're just past the three, three and a half mark so all all good uh spy bot search and destroy uh since we're coming back to the um discussion it was great yeah it's it's a good it's a good tool uh, malware bytes as a couple people mentioned is awesome because there's a free version and if you are in a pinch you can just download it on whoever system that you're on and 
run it. So it's a, it's a beautiful system. If you can afford the pay version and support the people that write the program, that's good. Uh, and we do in house. Um, but yeah, as far as just like in the field and you're like, Oh no, this might be a problem. And I'm on my 80 year old mother's computer. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to download it and go. And that's my go-to tool. So nice. Yeah. Uh, I think we're being punned here by Jean Marco. Everything I come up with on Lucio is a uh, wonderful adult beverage. <laughs> well, okay then. That works for me. Uh, yeah. Unforgiven was my first pun of the day. Mm. I just put so, my kid to bed. Enter Sandman. Yep, yep. we're close here. We're going to be done in 25 minutes. Yep, sounds good. But we haven't done my favorite Metallica song yet, so <laughs> let you guys guess what it is. Remember, I know what it is. I, I my degrees are in history, <laughs> <laughs> specifically like medieval and Renaissance. So, uh, yeah, Minecraft at fourteen FPS. All right. So that's uh, the RX four eighty would definitely definitely run that. Yeah, uh, way better. Yeah. <laughs> 327, Jason Helms. Dave, we have several backstop different things. And the last backstop is the dirt that leads up to a hill. Man, that's what I want. I want a backstop in my backyard. We, we have a nice big backyard and we could toss little chunks of metal down lane. But uh, unfortunately, I have a thin fence and suppose that are three quarter inches thick uh, made of cedar. And then right behind that is a small set of woods followed by a trailer park. And if you want to shoot through a uh, the metal wall of a mobile home, <laughs> all you need is a slingshot and a wet chunk of paper. That's for sure. <laughs> There's no hills in Texas, or at least down in Houston. Yeah, not down here. Um, although, of course, there are in my neighborhood because I'm in, in what's called the Heights <laughs> of Houston, uh, which means that unlike the rest of, the, of Houston, our houses are about 20 feet above sea level. <laughs> thus the heights <laughs> yeah yeah which is why when we get heavy rains hey how'd you fare for, uh, in all these rains the other day did you guys flood uh the backyard flooded but no 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 shock there so yeah good um but drained all eventually so 328 luke butler checks in hi luke happy new year yep i was unable to connect to my pie through vnc or putty after rebooting it all pings timed out and the IP address didn't appear to change. Well, how do you know, uh, first of all, that the IP address didn't change? So if you're hooked up to a, a mouse and keyboard, uh, that there's an easy answer to that, right? You're gonna open up terminal and run IP space A, or you can hover your mouse over the internet connection in the upper right-hand corner, and it'll tell you IP address. Um, the next thing after it rebooted, um, I don't know if you're wired or wireless here. So you could, would, should have two addresses. I would next check either uh, in the command line utility. Uh, can, yeah, let's go with that. Pseudo raspy dash config and check the interfaces, make sure that they didn't get disabled. Both VNC and uh, SSH are there. You can also do that from the little menu, the uh, Raspberry Pi menu in the upper left-hand corner, uh, and then go down to preferences, and you'll see the configuration utility in there. You can get to the same interfaces uh, system from there. If those two don't show you a reason why it's been disabled, I would lean toward something has become corrupt. If it has, it's certainly not the first. I've had two systems become corrupt over the last eight years. Uh, but you know, if you read the support forums, there are plenty of reports of people who've become corrupt. Uh, if anybody else has any other ideas, I, 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 there's something in my head that says, I'm missing something obvious. But those are the three things that come to mind. They've either become disabled, now, my fourth thing, uh, I, I want you to confirm that you know the IP address hasn't changed. And if there's any chance, and, and if, you're not, if you're running headless, you don't have a mouse or a, a keyboard or something like that, 
download on your Windows machine a copy of Angry IP Scanner or Advanced IP Scanner and run a scan. Or if you got advanced stuff, if you got Nmap or something like that, uh, have it look out and, and see if it finds anything. The fact that it was working before and isn't working now, my first thought is IP address change. My second thought is corruption and my third thought are configuration change. I guess there's another one. You may have added some piece of software that made a, a configuration change like Pi-hole or something. Because uh, in Pi-hole you get to change the IP address. Let me know, give me some more information or give those things a try. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna water my cider down. I just colorized my vodka. <laughs> Yeah, I am a lightweight, and but I did have two mimosas, so there. Oh, two! I, I, oh, well, goodness. I topped it off after it got halfway empty because there was living some... on the edge, Dave. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so yeah, D Dave is Dave is the opposite end of the spectrum from me and Mike. Uh, Mike and I are uh, inveterate partiers, um, <laughs> as as you as you you heard me out him. Uh, and I called him at eight o'clock this morning because we were supposed to start working at eight o'clock this morning. And he's like, <laughs> all good. All good. We had old bananas. That's not like fermented or anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, There's only one thing to do with old bananas and that's banana bread. No walnuts. Why do you want to take good food and put something that awful in there? That's just, confusing <laughs> in sync <laughs> right is it really worth update your router firmware by uh, uh, ddwrt might constantly mention this wow in okay so that's a that's a that's a serious question alice yeah. at 334 um because mike mike has in the past very much been take your linksys router nuke the firmware and put ddwrt firmware on there to make it to unleash its potential. I think that was true years ago, but I wouldn't do it now. Uh, that's that's just me. Uh, most of the uh, most of the routers that that I buy pretty much are unlocked with all the the great features out of the box because that's what I pay for. Um, there was a, a weird period of time where Linksys, who is was bought out by Cisco, produced consumer routers that had that were the same router internally as the professional router. And the DDWRT would essentially go, oh, let me t peel the consumer uh, uh, training wheels off and give you the real potential of your router. But nowadays, uh, I don't know, maybe you've seen something different with recent routers, Dave, but. No, um, I, I'm with you 99 and three quarters percent. Uh, and I, my understanding of the way this all happened is most of the router manufacturers essentially licensed DDWRT and then kind of customized it for their own differentials. The sure. ASUS routers are doing something very interesting. There is DDWRT for them. Uh, they come with, factory software that's pretty much DDWRT, but they also, and software firmware, uh, but they also have uh, a blow the doors off, kind of their own version of, you can really open it up further if you want to uh, slice your own throat on the bleeding edge of technology. They have this firmware called Merlin. Uh, so you can add that to your, or replace your ASUS residential router, Soho router firmware with Merlin. I'm terrified. I, I want to play with it very badly. Uh, my router here in house is really cool. It, uh, it's a freebie. It's a loaner, in fact, from my carrier. Those of you in the States, uh, T-Mobile. If you have a T-Mobile account, you can go into the store and ask them for a current Soho router. And they will give it to you or they will lend it to you. Turn it in when you're done with it. And, and it's cool and it's new. And it's the same thing as whatever a, a very current real ASUS is. I think mine is an AC66U uh, and they do one thing to it. And that is they make it support 
VoIP phone calls. So if somebody is in your front yard on the road in front of you and wants to make a phone call, if they can pick up your router, they'll make the call through there. Well, I don't cotton to that at all, but fortunately that's a disableable function. So I went to my T-Mobile store, I got my handy dandy little router, I turned off that feature of it and I got a cool new Asus router and I update it every year or two. So I, I'm afraid to do Merlin on there because when I turn it in, <laughs> I don't want them to say, wait a minute, you've changed this and we're going to charge you. <laughs> Semi related. Yep. Okay. When it comes to test, taste and heels. <laughs> Good God. I'm starting to think that uh, Metallica's from the Netherlands. Andre knows way too much. They have hundreds of songs. So there's plenty of. Uh options for. Yep. I see some follow-up from Luke at 336. He's talking to Telewick. I'm connecting my laptop via an Ethernet cable, but my router said I was connected to Wi-Fi. All right. You bring up more questions than answers here. If you have a direct connection between your Pi and your laptop with an Ethernet cable, if it's not a crossover cable, they're not going to talk. You got to have a crossover cable between the two of them. And I'm going to leave the, my router said I was connected to Wi-Fi. I, the Pi wireless. Okay, that's possible. If, it, if, if it's handed out a DHCP address to your Pi, they may be talking. But if they're talking, you got to be able to ping it. So still more questions than answers. Sorry, guy. Yep. Oh, <laughs> bell tolls. Unity. You see the maintain. Oops, super scroll. And I didn't mark my spot. There goes walnuts. We were right around 340. Got? Yeah, we got 15 minutes. We got a lot of questions. So I'm going to power through just the critical ones now. Okay. All right, cool. Because as Tullowit mentioned, uh, Alice keeps interrupting our puns with <laughs> legitimate questions. With real questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so let's let's take a, a momentary break here. Remind everybody, there's a, there was a couple new faces. Uh, if you're not playing on the Discord server, Scott's going to tell you about it, and I'm going to bring it up. Show you how to get there today. I just I posted at 3:45 the link for today. You're just too bloody uh, so damn good. We um we do not have a Discord channel, official Total Seminars, because uh, none of us really have time to run it. Uh, <laughs> but our friend and one of your compatriots here, Jose Braden has set up a Discord, uh, and we generally hang out there um, off and on during the day and sometimes at night and often after the 2 to 4 p.m. AMAs, we go hang out uh, and just chat because it's uh, it's informal. Um, we can relax a little more and not have to be completely politically correct. <laughs> and if Mike's on, we're definitely not politically correct, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, a fun time is, is usually had by all. So, I'm logged in 24 hours. If you ever want to talk, just ping me there. Um, it's always running. Yeah, and <laughs> unfortunately, I, I have I use Discord in a bunch of games uh, and with a bunch of different gaming circles, and so I I turn it off. <laughs> so I'm I'm definitely not logged in 24 hours because it pings too often. Um, for me. Uh, I got to give delivery. I'm going to sign for, I'll be right back. All right. Sounds good. Mute my mic while I do that. I so yeah. Uh, and I realized that whiskey in the jar, the greatest Metallica song ever was not written by Metallica. I know, but it's still awesome because you know, when you have a heavy metal band turning around an English folk song, can you go wrong? I mean, really, although I will say, that the Thin Lizzy version of Whiskey in the Jar is better. That's just me. And now those of you who are much younger than me are like, who, Thin Lizzy? Look them up, it's all good. <laughs> oh no, I'm afraid, tell it, put some link in the Discord. Okay, so let's, 
let's keep scrolling through some of these things here. So I'm at uh, 342. And uh, yeah, in case we're giving Elbow a hard time for not uh, joining Discord, but that's okay. You know, some people are a little more shy than others and don't <laughs> want to go on camera and that's cool, right? Those of us who are introverts and pretend to be extroverts like me, uh, you know, we have to gear up to go on camera. Um, then people who are extroverts playing extroverts like Dave, he's all, he's all over it. <laughs> or they, they call me Captain Shy outside of this realm. I sit <laughs> in my basement, eat Cheetos, and game. <laughs> Wait, that's what I do. <laughs> Uh, so what are we doing next Friday or Pi Day? You know, the answer is I don't know. And okay. there's an important reason. I had a very specific plan and New Year's Eve waiting for things. I started experimenting with it and I discovered it totally doesn't work. Um, here, let me tell you everybody about this just for a second. When you do a network search in Windows, you don't see much these days, especially if you, there is no especially, you don't see much. Sometimes you see things and it's becoming very, very, very inconsistent. And I never see the pies unless I connect to them in advance. You gotta know it's there. So I did a little, what I thought was research and said, oh, well, here's the missing thing. We're gonna add this in to the pie and that will send out pings to the world. I'm here, here's my name. It's kind of a, a net BIOS enhancer sort of thing. Uh, and so I went to uh, install it yesterday to give it a try. It's already there. Uh, so installing it doesn't help. And it said you already have this, the latest version. The setup was going to be, let's use net BIOS and bonjour and zero conf to make our pies very visible to the rest of the network and to other pies. And then the following week, we would say, let's throw all that away and let's build a real honest to goodness DNS server on a Pi. But now that foundation is thrown out. So I don't know, I've got a list of 13 topics that I, I have aced out for the next 13 weeks. I'm gonna throw that one out and I'm gonna find a new one. So sorry about that. All right, no, that, fair enough. It's just, uh, it, it is a topic of conversation that we usually uh, hit right around this time. You're exactly so, right. I asked the question. Wish I'd had a, a, Didn't mean to like, to go toss you under the bus. I got thrown yesterday. <laughs> well, okay. Sounds good. Everybody's playing with wireless and land nuts. <laughs> My old fail to install repository error, so that was annoying as well. Um, that would lead me to believe corruption. I'd start from scratch. That's what uh, wiped out on mine as well. I, I was running Pi-hole on a small micro SD card and it corrupted. I chucked it and replaced it with a huge one and it's been running for months now. And and uh, Luke, uh, Dave, would you put up our, our email contact information? Let's do that. So Luke Butler, um, so you've got a lot of questions here on, on your specific Pi thing. And although we, I can't say that we are going to help you troubleshoot everything, um, we certainly enjoy the challenge of troubleshooting. And I mean, we do this kind of stuff just because it's fun, right? So here's our contact information. Dave is the, obviously the expert on the Raspberry Pi. Dave R at totalsim.com, send him an email. And yeah, lay we out- We work a lot more closely together yeah. and get a lot more detail and information on something like that. And the fun part about doing that is that if we get a challenging uh, troubleshooting scenario, then we can then present it at the next uh, AMA or drama and say, hey, here's the scenario. This is a troubleshooting real world thing that we had to deal with. And here, here, here are the ramifications, here are the symptoms, here are the fixes. And this goes directly into what you need to know for CompTIA A+, CompTIA Network+, Plus, CompTIA Security+, Plus, because these real world scenario questions, you will get asked them. You know, look at the results of this. What problem could this be? So. Great, thanks, Scott. That's perfect. You betcha. Uh, I made a mistake on the tag, okay. 
<clears throat> Dallas can get on camera with her shine. There you go. Right. So those of you who haven't played with us on Discord, Alice says she's shy, but she's been climbing out of that and she comes on camera and talks with us. So it's all good. Right. Nobody calls Colowit Dave, even though that's his name. So I, I know. Dave, I assume I call, it's I call I'll, I'll call Colowit Dave when I'm emailing back and forth, but yeah. yeah. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Both of them for me, as far as OG goes, Tullowit. Passing 52. Good. We're just about on, caught up here then. We are. Yeah. So I wanted to give the full info, but comments are restricted. Yeah, right. We only get 200 characters here. Right. By the way, guys, says Luke, I tried very hard to search up some info. Couldn't come up with anything. Cheers for the advice and contact details. Okay, good. We're glad we can help out. And we want to help more. Oh, OG. Yeah, exactly. Oh, OG. I'll go with that. <clears throat> I think we are uh, we are caught up and got caught. five minutes to close things down. So nice. Uh, here, tell you what, let me bring up Uncle List of things that I had scheduled in order. And I'll throw them out and just give me some feedback. What do you guys think would be cool, interesting? Yes, I'm going to do clusters. I'm not going to do yet. We've got to do the uh, the foundation work. Oh, and while you're looking up that stuff, uh, yeah. let me mention that Mike Myers will be back on his regular uh, AMA schedule starting on Monday. Uh, I, I pinged him to see if he wanted to join us today, and he just kind of grunted at me. <laughs> uh, rolled back over. <laughs> yeah, rolled back over. <laughs> I am not human. Um, so today was not a, a good day for him, but Monday... Uh, and Wednesday, Mike will be back on it to take your questions and, and give good advice. I, I don't know if he has something special for Monday, but if check the banner on uh, the Total Seminars chapter, Total Seminars channel on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. we should have a new banner up today, tomorrow. And nah, it should go up Monday. I, I I'll talk to you about that or when we get done here, there's something kind of cool. Oh, All right. Okay. Well, here's the, the Lex, the next eight that I had in my list. And my guess is we just drop one and do the rest in order, but let me know what everybody's feeling here. So what was going to be on Friday is find your raspberry Pi on the network. We were going to kind of make it a super net bios thing. And then the following week set up a DNS server using the, a DNS server called unbound used to be bind was the DNS server of choice in Linux. Uh, it's so old now that it has been supplanted by unbound as opposed to the old bound up bind. Uh, the following week, install Docker on Raspberry Pi. Cool. Very exciting, looking for that. Yeah, that should be fun. The following week, I, it, this is a tentative date. These weren't factual. Uh, install, uh, build your first Raspberry Pi cluster followed the following week by Chromium from the command line. You want to see uh, a kiosk. They call it kiosk mode, in fact. So maybe you're setting up signage, digital signage, uh, you are here type things. Uh, and you don't want people to know that you're actually looking at a browser. Uh, it's pretty fun and simple and, and easy and interesting and has a lot of features on how to, to, to use the Chromium browser from the command line so you don't see the browser frames and all that stuff. Very cool. So uh, just just posted in. Apparently, uh, people are paying attention. Uh, Mike's AMA is a general AMA on Monday, so no specific. Very good, thanks. Although, if he gets questions that come into Michael M at totalsim.com over the weekend, he will definitely address those directly. So feel free yeah, to please. email Mike. Uh, he's always always happy to get your email uh, messages. So. Two Jump more on in. my list. Uh, I got another way of displaying IP addresses on an LED. That'll be kind of cool Okay. with blinkage. And then the last one on my list of things that I know I'm going to do, overclocking the Raspberry Pi. So talk to me on Discord if you have a particular interest. Let's do one of those right now. Uh, otherwise, I think we're going to do DNS uh, Unbound. I'm not 100% committed to that because I haven't started labbing it myself. I don't know how much I have to learn yet. Right. So uh, a late question came in okay. uh, from Tullowit uh, about hybrid drives. Hybrid okay. drives are, are a combination of, of uh, spinny, <laughs> traditional hard disk drives 
and solid state drive. So they have a small solid state piece that then when necessary, uh, the access is the spinny drive. Um, I, I'm, I don't know where you are with uh, uh, hybrid drives, but I, I think they're at this point because solid state drives have become so inexpensive and so long lasting that why, why waste your money? Yeah, uh, Michael Smyer is listening to us in the background. He's saying, say no to hybrids. I also am saying no. Somebody asked me a question about it the other day and I went down the research rabbit hole. And one of the things that, well, in fact, this was germane to uh, a show we did three weeks ago. Uh, the problem with hybrid drives is there are little micro SSDs in there uh, that operate as a caching drive. They're constantly 100% being overwritten. So their life cycle uh, time-wise is going to be very low compared to a real yep. SSD. Yep. And that's, that's another problem with them. They were a great stopgap thing when SSD technology was really, really expensive. But I mean, today, just buy a good SSD and you're done. Well, guys. Oh, we're done. We uh, have we're hit fine. the wall. It has been wonderful. I'm very thrilled that you all showed up and joined us. Uh, can't thank you enough as always. And Scott, Dave, thank you. Of course, <laughs> I know. Awesome. Thank you. That was yeah. that was fun. A good there AMA, a, a good dude. drama plus S. I'm the drama. S. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I'm still stuck on the old drama when it was just drama. So yes, it's dramas, and and th this is not the Dave Rush show. This is the Dave and Scott show. It's morphed into that, and I, I kind of like that. And we should maybe look at having the uh, banner adjusted accordingly. So, uh, I, I'm happy to be the footnote. Yeah, <laughs> you're definitely not. <laughs> well, listen, happy uh, 2021 to all of you. Oh, yeah, you got something else? No. Nope. Yeah, the point. I'm getting oh. ready for the wave, man. Okay. Well, Merry New Year to you. See Mike on Monday. You'll see us next Friday. And until then, good night. Good night. And now the awkward stare. I love the awkward stare. The awkward stare part is great. <laughs> My favorite part of the